there's really three ways that you can justify research method methods that you can be using in a research paper that I've seen. There's probably differences and stuff, but this is generally what I've seen. And so this is what I'm going to tell you. Um, the first one is that there's some sort of theoretical reason. This is the biggest reason why you would use a research method. And so what I'm talking about with research methods, whether using some sort of experiment or quasi experiment, um, you know, maybe using some sort of correlational analysis or something along those lines or qualitative um, ethnography of some sort. And really what you're looking for is some sort of theoretical reason to use that research method. So, you know, qualitative methods really look at pro a lot. Some of them look at process or process. Um, some of them look at like how things are actually done. That's actually a really big reason for why you might use a case study sort of methodology. Um, others might use if you're doing experimental, you know, you might be thinking about getting at the causal mechanism a little bit more and trying to get some sort of precision on what is really going on with what you're looking at, right? So in often it sort of relates to maybe it's some sort of conflicting mechanism or you just really so qualitative is like it's a completely new thing. Nobody really understands it. And so you'd want to go and get some sort of case study um, information or do an ethnography or field study where you go out and actually do something where you're trying to gather information about what is really going on. But, um, you know, experimental stuff is usually really refined. It's usually um, often that it, it is, you know, trying to to sort of qualify some sort of debate that is going on. It's getting at some sort of mechanism where it's been it's people really understand what's going on and you're just trying to get a little bit more you know, um, information about what's going on. Or, you know, maybe with quasi experiments, maybe there's some sort of really cool, um, you know, debate that's going on within the, the literature and you can't get at it unless you did sort of a natural or a quasi experiment where you're getting into getting some sort of phenomenon that's going on, right? So you understand the setting and then you also understand the theory as well and you're getting some sort of insight into that. And that's where the sort of second thing comes into play is, and this is where a lot of literature is moving, is that there is some sort of really cool contextual feature that is happening. So what is going on in this setting that allows you to use the research method that you'd like to choose, right? So, um, you know, this is where you look at the context and in a lot of us or probably more industry study, you know, they look at different industries or different settings or maybe you look at physicians, for example, or maybe you look at nurses, for example, or maybe you look at, um, I don't know, you, you look at, um, you name it, maybe it's kids, uh, you know, anybody that's under the age of 18 and, and there's only a certain method that you'd want to use in that context and that's sort of revealing something that's that's interesting, right? So um, I think it's, it's Alison Gopnik's research with dealing with how kids think. Um, you know, there's some interesting sort of insights in using, and I can't remember that, she they actually developed a new tool in terms of doing the investigation there um, of looking at, you know, how somebody actually does does learn and you might come up with some sort of new tool or research method to investigate what's going on. And then you come back in terms of informing the theory from that particular context, right? So in that case, you're looking, they were looking at, um, you know, how kids learn and in, in informing how adults actually learn based on that information, right? So it's kind of interesting to look at that kind of stuff. And, and that happens across the board, it doesn't have to be necessarily you know, um, theory driven, it does, but at the same time, you can use the context. And that's where a lot, that's where I'm saying a lot of, a lot of research is moving that way with sort of quasi experimental designs or natural, um, you know, natural designs that are natural experiments that are happening where, you know, you look at some really interesting feature and then you can use that feature to get a causal identification, uh, identification. So looking at maybe it's an earthquake that happens or, you know, maybe that there was a strike that happened. Um, maybe there was, I don't know, COVID-19 that happened, um, you know, something along those lines. And you can look at that as an exogenous impact and you can get some sort of insight in terms of, what, in terms of what's going on. Um, and then the last one, in, and this is maybe the, the least interesting, but it's also tried and true and it does help you get published. It's just looking to see what are, it's already been done in the literature and you really just try to sort of replicate what you're, what's already been done 
and then on top of it you extend the theory based on what's what's already done and been, been done right so you know if you're looking at the same old data set another patent data set another um, you know copy set crisp data set um, you know another was a national late uh, labor study kind of data set or study you might just want to use the tried and true and then you come up the theory using you know some new insight with what's going on because that it just allows you to be more defensible in 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 the literature and, and when you're actually coming up with them you know a study and trying to investigate what's going on the other thing too is if you do that if it's all tried and true really just cuts down on your context sort of section or your setting section and you can go right into you know, the empirical methodology a lot more quicker and sort of focus on the theory a lot more. So, um, you know, I think it, it, it really depends on your research question in terms of what you want to do and what you're really thinking about in terms of, you know, what you would justify before your research methods. And really what you're just looking for is a justification that makes sense and that it is defensible. It doesn't mean that it has to be the right justification, it just means that it's, it's defensible and it appears to be valid to the outside world in terms of what you're doing. It's not just kind of pulled out of thin air, but you know, researchers realize that it is pulled out of thin air a lot of times and that we have to sort of justify why we actually do those things. And there's, you know, we, we have our own different sort of insight in terms of what we're looking for. And you just have to come up with this sort of concrete theoretical justification or some sort of justification why you use that research method um, in your study. That's really what it comes to.